we are back. That's right. We are back. This is the Ethnic Health Disparities Podcast Show. My name is Dr. B, and we are back. This is show number eight. Show number eight. And we are still analyzing the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC's report, Health Disparities and Inequalities Report, United States 2011. And this is the fourth segment of it, actually, Analyzing Health Disparities, reports number four. Wow. Yeah, this is show number eight for the Epic Health Disparities Podcast Show. Thank you for continuing to follow follow me on this uh, healthy, healthy Health dis- Podcast Show. We're going through the data right now. And show number seven, show number seven, we went through the health insurance coverage, influenza vaccination coverage, and colorectal cancer screening. This show, this show, we're going to another level. Health outcomes. We will be looking at, unfortunately, the health outcomes and of mortality, death. These, these, this is the st- statistics that we look at, we examine as public health professionals, and determine what are the trends, what are the issues, what are the ethnic health disparities, major issues, problems, concerns. How can we intervene when we have these types of mortality issues affecting specific racial and ethnic populations here in the United States consistently more than other populations? That's why, again, again, I'm biased. This Ethnic Health Disparities Podcast show is so important. Because no one is talking about this on a consistent basis. And now I'm going through the data. Yes, this is 2011 data. But I want to start here. Because this is a telltale sign. We're going to go back and uh, look at the 1985 data. And then we're going to have the 2018 data. Oh, yes. There's lots of... But no one's coordinating this. There's all these reports out. No one's coordinating it. No one's connecting it. No one's not bringing... But... Yet, (laughs) but yet, I am, (laughs) this show is, (laughs) so there you go. Uh, Again, I just want to say all rights and responsibilities uh, of these Ethnic Health Disparities podcast show belongs to Dr. B. And please do subscribe to me, uh, to our show at EJB67, that's email EJB678 at gmail.com and subscribe to our podcast. We're on iTunes iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, and YouTube. There you go. So that's the setup. I'm three minutes in. Yes. This is show number eight. And now we're looking at health outcomes, mortality. Here here are the major issues that we're going to highlight that the CDC report highlights in health outcomes. It's time. To look at mortality. They focus on infant death deaths, United States 2000 to 2007. They focus on motor vehicle related deaths, the U.S. 2003-2007. Suicides, U.S. 2003-2007. Drug induced deaths, U.S. 2003-2007. Coronary heart disease and stroke, the U.S. 2006. And homicides, 1999 through 2007. Again, these are some very serious issues. And uh, let me just say this. Here we go. Here we go. I knew this is coming. It's so important that we, and it's hard. This is the hard part. And uh, that's the reason I'm doing this. This is the hard part. Uh, You really got to start personalizing this data. Because otherwise, the data will be as generic as possible and, and as distant as possible. And one of the things I always encourage in my classes, but particularly with this show, for everyone, for the general public, we have to start seeing faces of people 
and family members and friends who we are losing prematurely because of these ethnic health disparity issues. These disparity issues affects everybody. So, again, I'm going to highlight, of course, read the numbers, but I want you to start thinking and personalizing these issues with your own family, friends, associates, and recognizing that we are losing too many folks too early. Okay? That's where this these shows are very important. It's not just about going over data, challenging policy. It's it's about here it is. It's about trying to save lives. There you go. I'm in show eight. And I waited, I waited, and all of this is truly is about trying to save lives all the time, not losing our family members and friends earlier, having our family members and friends live a quality life, just like everybody else in the U.S. So now we're in health outcomes, mortality. It's time to personalize these issues. So think about loved ones. And this will bring more of an important issue of these uh, of these significant health disparity issues to each and every one of us. That's the way I see it. There you go. That's again, that's that's it's real. So, infant deaths, number one. In 2006, the overall U.S. infant uh, mortality was 6.68 infant deaths per 1,000 live births, with considerable disparities by race and Hispanic origin. So we got a 6.68 infant death rate per 1,000. The highest infant mortality rate was for non-Hispanic black women with a rate 2.4 times that for non-Hispanic white women. That's 2.4 times higher. Analysis on trends and variations in infant mortality reveals not only considerable differences in infant mortality rates among racial and ethnic groups, but the persistence of disparities over time. This is nothing new. Hello, that's what they're saying. This has been a consistent and persistent disparities between black women and white women where infant deaths are happening 2.4 times higher. That should startle you. That should say, wait a minute. We're losing infants. 2.4, three, almost three times higher. That is shocking. Shocking. Hello. Needless lives lost. Then it further says prevention of preterm birth is critical to both lowering the overall infant mortality rate and reducing racial and ethnic disparities. Now, let me just say this. I used to be, I was asked uh, years ago to join uh, when I lived in Houston, Texas, oh my gosh, I was asked as a cultural medical anthropologist to participate in an excellent program in Houston, Texas, uh, working with the March of Dimes. This was the ba uh, a Baby Buddy program. And at that time, during the late 80s, late 80s 1988, uh, Houston, Texas had a very difficult issue of infant mortality and uh, prenatal care for young mothers. So I was asked when I was a professor at University of Houston to assist the March of Dimes in their baby buddy program. And that is to reach out to young African American mothers and Hispanic mothers and their families to get earlier prenatal care. I love doing it. I was asked to be a part of and do the study. I sat down and talked and conducted interviews with young mothers and their partners. And we were attempting to find out what were some of the major issues and I found out a lot of those issues the reason why and it was very basic 
it was a lot of barriers in uh, for many young mothers in seeking care, uh, a lack of support in their home environment. But many times there was a lot of perceived barriers, a lot of misconceptions about prenatal care. And they wanted more of their family members a part of the prenatal care um, program. That's what I found out back in 1988-89. That helped provide more information, cultural health information. So we, can lo so we attempted to lower the death rates for infants in Houston, Texas at that time. I love the program. March of Dimes does an excellent job. Let me just say this. March of Dimes does an excellent job consistently throughout the decades. And I've been connected with them even lately here in North Carolina. So again, we know there's higher rates of infant mortality in specific racial and ethnic populations, particularly African American, uh, non-Hispanic black, as well as Hispanics. And yet the rates are still consistently higher. Should not happen. We're losing too many infants. Same thing occurred when I was in Indiana. High infant mortality rate. And it looks like it's been uh, now in Ohio. Because I just came from a public health conference. And things are happening in Ohio. Particularly Cleveland, Ohio. Wow. And they have a high maternal mortality rate. Hello. And that's not in this report, but that's one of the latest data. Mm, we're going to get to that too in another show. Okay, so infant deaths. That's one area. Motor vehicle related deaths. I'm going to have to move faster. The overall motor vehicle related deaths, adjusted death for U.S. was 14.5 deaths per 100,000. American Indian Alaska Natives had the highest death rate. At 29.1 deaths per 100,000. For all racial and ethnic groups, males had death rates that were two to three times higher than for females. So, obviously, there are certain issues happening among American and Alaska Natives. As well as for men. Need to implement better intervention strategies reach out to men reach out to American Indian Alaska Natives before they get a, 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 around a, a, a vehicle or driving a vehicle or whatever the issues are we need to target specific culturally competent programs for American Indian Alaska Natives and for men. Hello? Another health outcome mortality, suicides. In 2007, a total of 34,598 suicides occurred in the U.S. 83.5% of suicides were among non-Hispanic whites. 7.1% among Hispanics, 5.5% among non-Hispanic blacks, 2.5% among Asian Pacific Islanders, and 1.1% among American and Alaska Natives. Su suicide rates by race and ethnicity and age group demonstrate different patterns. The highest race and ethnicity group specific were among American and Alaska Native adolescents, young adults. Yet the highest rates, as they say, 83.5% of suicides were among non-Hispanic whites. Hello. What is happening? That's 83.5%. Then a big drop off. Goes down to 7.1% Hispanics, 5.5% non-Hispanic blacks, and 2.5% Asian. What is and 1.1% among American and Latin? What is happening? in non-Hispanic white communities across the U.S. where we have a substantially high rate of suicides. Excuse me here. Something is happening. Something culturally is happening. Mental health issues, 
mental illness issues are happening. What is it? Stress. What is it? What's happening among non-Hispanic whites where they're committing multiple times of suicide higher? 83.5% of all suicides. That's not good. That's a that's a red alert. Hello. Like I said, this show is for everybody. Everyone is in a particularly ethnic health disparities category. So what we have here among non-Hispanic uh, whites is a substantially high rate of suicide. This should not happen. Hello. We're going to get back to that another date. Let's go through I'm 15 minutes in, so almost 16. I got three more categories. Quickly, drug-induced deaths, coronary heart disease and stroke, and homicides. Drug-induced deaths. We see that uh, prescription drugs cause more deaths than illicit drugs. This, this is related to the opioid epidemic. Now, when this report came out, opioids were, were the... Uh, wasn't happening any major degree. But now it's a red alert, traumatic state. This is happening. Other than Hispanics, all racial and ethnic groups have had increases in drug induced deaths in recent years. The highest rates overall were among non Hispanic whites for each year examined. Hello. What is happening among non Hispanic white populations across the United States? Substance abuse treatment uh, practices, treatment options are they're available. They're not taking individuals are not participating. And CDC states the cohort studies have demonstrated the effectiveness of long term methadone maintenance therapy, but the impact of other interventions is still under study. Again, we have an opioid epidemic. We're not taking these drug-induced deaths seriously. And it's happening more so among non-Hispanic whites. Hello. Hello, folks. This is everybody. Next, coronary heart disease and stroke. Comparison of my race reveals that black women and men have much higher coronary heart disease, CHD death rates, Again, forty between the forty five and seventy four year age group. A higher percentage of black women than white women died before the age of seventy five as a result of coronary heart disease, as did black men, sixty one point five percent compared with white men. Premature deaths attributed to coronary heart disease and stroke among black adults indicate the need for evidence-based interventions to reduce prevalence of risk factors for coronary heart disease among black children. No kidding. No kidding. So, we coronary heart disease and stroke is a killer. Taking out our loved ones much earlier than need be. And we need intervention across the board to address obesity, physical activity, nutrition, diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol. These are the contributing factors. It's straightforward. Coronary heart disease and stroke is a killer. Wake up, America. Wake up. Everybody. Finally, homicides. 2007 disparities in homicide rates by age, race, and ethnicity and sex were evident. Homicide rates was particularly high among young, uh, young adult black males. Homicide rates were highest among age 4, 15 to 34 years of age. The overall rate for males was approximately four times higher than for females. Homicide rates were consistently highest among non-Hispanic blacks. But the rates 
where half of those reported for those demographic in the early 1990s, homicide extremely outcome, a broader public health problem of interpersonal violence, and effective evidence-based strategies are available to reduce youth violence. That's, that's talk. Task Force on Community Preventive Services reported universal school-based interventions. Aimed, I'm not even going to waste my time on that. It's a traumatic. That's, this is an epidemic. Homicide rates for non-Hispanic blacks always been high. I lived in different cities. I'm not going to even name the cities, but every city that I lived in, homicide rates, particularly for non-Hispanic blacks, was always high. And we always give it lip service. And it continues. When are we going to get serious about all of these issues, all of these issues that can be prevented? Most of these issues, homicide rates, can be prevented. Prevented. Stopped. Are we taking it serious? In the community, hello, is the community taking it serious? Are we accepting these high rates again and again? Are we accepting these rates? Every year, every decade. And these rates get higher and higher. So we're accepting the are we accepting the high rates of homicides? Are we accepting the high rates of coronary heart disease and stroke? Are we accepting drug induced deaths at a high rate? Are we accepting higher suicide rates? Are we accepting more vehicle related deaths? Are we accepting the higher rates of infant infant deaths? You tell me. And I'm going to say, yes, we are. As a society, as a U.S. society, we have accepted these higher rates among specific populational, population groups. Non-Hispanic blacks, Hispanics, non-Hispanic whites. Hello, We're, we have accepted these higher rates. American Indian Alaska Natives. Black women, we've accepted these rates. Why are we accepting these rates? Should not happen in 2019 when we are the United States of America. Wake up, you, the United States of America. We have a problem. We're not accepting these. We're not, we're not putting all our resources in the, in the right areas. Because we're accepting these higher rates. And at some point in time, we need to... Put the brakes on and address these issues. Front and center. Each and every one of us. Bottom line. So there you go. This is show number eight. I told you we're going to get into the personal issue. I want you to see these issues are very significant. It's, it's, it's extremely important. And personalize these issues the best way you can. And it hurts. It hurts. When you personalize it, yes, it's supposed to. That's when people do things. Take action. This is show number eight. I am Dr. B. This is the Ethnic Health Disparities Podcast. Email me at ejb678 at gmail.com. And subscribe to my podcast. It's on, guess what? It's on iTunes. It's on Spotify. It's on Podbean. And yes, I'm even on YouTube. Stay tuned. Guess what, folks? Uh-oh. i got to make sure everything works right in the studio. I'm kind of timed out. i got to work things in the studio. Because I've been talking and not paying attention to my <laughs> to pay attention to my computer. There we go. Peace out, folks. We out. We are out. <laughs>